Speak louder. Yes, louder. Yeah. Speak loud, right up there. But did you see a lot of people? But no? Luce. My name is Luce Puzina. My name is Luce Puzina, yes. Stella. P U Z Y N A. Were you born in Lithuania? No, I was born in France. In France. In France. When did you go to Lithuania? I did go in Lithuania in 33 years. Yeah. 30, 30 first, no, sorry, uh, on 31. Uh, it's 31. 31. 1931. Mm -hmm. uh, did you go with your husband to Lithuania? Oui, je suis parti avec mon mari. Yes. Until 1954, yes. you have been living in Lithuania. Yes, I... Um, vous avez habité depuis ce temps-là jusqu'à le temps de partir en Italie. Oui, d'une manière permanente. Uh, no, permanent way. Why did you leave Lithuania? Pourquoi vous avez quitté l'Italie? Je voulais rentrer dans mon pays. Depuis 1946, j'ai demandé le visa de sortie de l'URSS. Il m'a été accordé seulement maintenant. Pendant huit ans, j'ai voulu rentrer, j'ai voulu revenir. Since 18 years, since 1946, I've tried to, re to return to my native country, France, and I asked to get the visa to go back to, to France. But only now, recently, I got the official permission to leave Lithuania. Were you living on a collective farm after 1941? Est-ce que vous avez habité dans une collective après 1941? J'ai travaillé dans une ferme collective de quatre mois, du 1er septembre 1953 jusqu'au 24 décembre 1953. Le paysan surtout, et le fonctionnaire. The workers, uh, are not paid enough, the, mm, the wages are very low, and that was their earning is not sufficient to for their living. actually, to prevent the spread of communism. Would you say that it isn't true, that, that, that would you not say that this is true, that one way to stop communism is not to collaborate with it? In a way. And it was about true that if the Western powers took a firm position, whether it's in Geneva, Berlin, or anywhere else, when they deal with communism, they would not only be raising the morale of the people behind the Iron Curtain, but spreading the idea of communism elsewhere. I think this would be the main question. And if we talk about actualities now, isn't it true that one of the best things this committee could do would be to create in the United States an understanding of the fact that any attempt to compromise with communism must result <coughs> in a gain for communism. Yes. And eventual control by communism. <coughs> I think so. And isn't it true that that is the story of Romania, that is the story of Poland, and practically every other country behind the Iron Curtain? Yes. <coughs> and if uh, the people behind those Iron Curtains were convinced today that the United States and other Western powers would seize to try to compromise with communism, it would be an upsurge of spirit in those countries? Yes, very much. That's right. Mr. Chairman, could I uh, uh, make this comment regarding uh, uh, Mr. Tresca's testimony? 
the Congress of the United States, as you know, Mr. Tresca, in 1951, authorized the creation of a special committee known as the Cartin Massacre Investigating Committee. And I happen to be chairman of that committee, and uh, Congressman Makovich, who was a member of this committee, was also a member of that committee. And uh, testimony was introduced at our hearings during that investigation regarding the prisoners that were taken uh, in the fall of 1939 from Poland and also uh, the early 1940s, in the early 1940. Uh, but of course, our committee did not uh, take testimony as to all the statistics regarding Polish prisoners, which you just presented to this committee. And uh, I might state that uh, testimony was presented stating that uh, in 1939, uh, right from also alone, there was 150,000 or more uh, prisoners taken uh, by the Russians. And uh, in the fall of 1939, especially in the early hours of the morning, uh, the Soviet police yes. separated the leaders of Lithuania by boat. She would be unable or would be stopped from leaving Lithuania. If she were a Lithuanian, she couldn't get out, is that it? Yes, that's correct. She could not leave if she were a Lithuanian. I could not leave Lithuania if I was born Lithuanian. That's all. Mr. Pien? Well, deporting people uh, from Lithuania <coughs> to uh, Siberia and slave labor camps. Est-ce que vous savez quelque chose? Est-ce qu'on toujours encore aujourd'hui on déporte de Lithuanie des gens pour des prisons, des des camps forcés? La dernière déportation que j'ai vue a eu lieu en septembre ou octobre 1951. Uh, Mr. Chairman, <coughs> um, I recognize uh, among the uh, officers uh, and uh, witnesses for the Polish Army and Polish former Free Poland gathered here today <coughs> some of the witnesses who testified uh, two years ago uh, uh, when the Cartin Massacre Committee, which was created by Congress in 1951, held hearings here in London. Uh, I want to, uh, to uh, state that uh, the experiences and the valiant fight that uh, you, uh, officers who are gathered here today, uh, put up for Poland uh, back in the beginning of, the, of World War II will go down in history as one of the outstanding examples of the historic fight that all Poles back through the century, through the centuries, have uh, demonstrated uh, through their patriotism for a free and independent Poland, uh, illustrates, to my mind, that uh, the uh, people of Poland will never uh, cease fighting and working as long as Poland uh, is held in communistic slavery 
And that fight will never cease until Poland is free. And I want to commend this group here today for being uh, one of the many leaders in that fight that has been going on and will continue to go on until Poland is free. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I could just add another witnesses that we had and who testified at length on the Katyn massacre investigation and uh, I don't know, I uh, understand he's to appear here as a witness and that's the, the great hero and leader of the Polish armies during World War II, uh, General Andrews. I understand he's to appear. That's correct, Mr. Abbey. I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Counsel, will you proceed to examine these Polish officers who we are very happy to have with us this morning? Yes, Mr. Chairman. And uh, Congressman Batten, you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, in addition to uh, your statements regarding General Andrews, I might say for the record that <clears throat> two years ago last month, the uh, Katyn Massacre Committee, which was authorized by Congress in 1951, held hearings in London. The officers of the Polish government in exile uh, that contributed so much in unraveling that international crime where 14,000 and more Polish officers, military officers, uh, judges, lawyers, doctors, and uh, Polish leaders were massacred by the Kremlin. And I will add to your statement in uh, uh, commending General Anders for the outstanding cooperation and work he not only gave the Katyn Committee, but is also giving uh, the committee of which Chairman Christ, uh, which Congressman Christian is chairman. Okay. Uh. Company is weak. I think the same is today. If the United States go ahead directly and thanks, all people will go with the United States. But if the United States speak only words and there are no facts, all people is weak. Uh, I think, excuse me, I think that the United States, for military men, don't understand today his leadership. This is my opinion. It's not time for these communists accepted into a coalition government. The, the Prime Minister, in, what, in, in March we went to Moscow, yes. but the coalition with the communists uh, lasted since the time when, uh, when Russia went into the war. When Russia went into the war, the communist, four communists in London went into our National Council. That was before you and Venice went to Moscow. No, the government was uh, accorded in Moscow. Before, before Moscow, the communists had no posts in our government. No posts. They didn't want it. State Council, yes. I th no, you didn't ask about the positions of the communists in the State Council, in the government. In the government. They had no posts before our uh, going to Moscow. When we, when we go to Moscow. Then, then we didn't have any uh, communists in the government in 1941. No, no one, no one. Now, uh, why did you and uh, Dr. Benish uh, believe that uh, you could get along with the communists? Yes, I, I see. Uh, in that time, the Russians for us were friends and uh, they assured us that uh, they will uh, grant all uh, democratic liberties. Uh, of course, if we had uh, judged the communists after their program and their literature, the Marxism and so on, we couldn't believe it. But uh, we 
we tried to believe. It was, it was the situation which did us try to believe the communists. Now, this is fast. of our hindsight, rather than foresight, do you believe that Dr. Benesi, yes. of course, at that time was a wise one? I see it, but I can only answer that Dr. Benesh did what, in his opinion, was necessary to save the democracy in Czechoslovakia. I understand that, but yes. uh, if, if he had knowledge then of the true tendencies of communism, which evidently he must have had some uh, inklings of, uh, he probably wouldn't have yes. done this. And of course not. And the uh, main thing, he, he believed that the Moscow government will help him in uh, getting the communists to reason, to, to... In other words, he thought a little communism was all right as long as you didn't get mad too much of it. Yes. He didn't know that once you start with a little communism, there's no end to it. Yes. Now, you mentioned the fact that Mr. Mikolajczyk of the Polish government, under much worse circumstances, <coughs> acceded to the desires of the British and the American government and did enter into the uh, yes. so-called Lublin government. Yes. But it's a, it's a fact, is it not, that Dr. N uh, that Stanislaus Mikolajczyk did so individually, but not the rest of the Polish government in exile? Uh, yes, but he was not, I don't think he was alone. He has uh, his party. 
It was a certain party of the uh, Poles, but Poles, the uh, uh, agrarian. It was only that one group. Right? Only that one group. And yes. the rest of the Poles yes. government in exile resisted. Yes, the yes, effort. yes. And as a result of their resistance, the British government and the United States government eventually withdrew the recognition of that government. Yes. So as I. What we're trying to find out, as I understand our task, is what happened in these countries after the communists took over. That's our purpose, really. Yes, yes. <coughs> Since we've gotten into this speculation, I, uh, I think it's fair to bring out that undoubtedly there was in your mind and in the mind of Dr. Benish, not only the fact that the Western powers were pressuring you to cooperate with the communists, but also the fact that in 1938 you had been abandoned by the West to the Nazis, practically. Now the Western, yes, by France and Britain, by other two. That must have been in your thinking, yeah. wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. And you'd suffered under this terrible Nazi occupation, as you've indicated. Now, if I understand that situation correctly, the people of Czechoslovakia were about ready to take anything in order to get away from the Nazi tyranny. And they'd had a bad experience with the West insofar as helping them out was concerned once before. Well, actually, they had very little choice to make. Isn't that a fact? Yes. I talked with Dr. Benish in Prague. I spent two days there with him in 1946. And my recollection you is... You ran under the congressman who went to France. No, I wasn't... Uh, Nothing I wasn't a congressman no. there. Uh, but I was down there and seen some time ago. My recollection is that uh, you told me that really you didn't have any choice. You did, I had the impression that you were really uh, yes. had a pistol at your head. Yes, well, that's accurate, isn't it? Yes. And also I had the impression from the people I knew in Czechoslovakia at the time that you were hopeful that you could somehow by getting back there, work this thing out, manage it so quietly. So now we do know that that was not possible, but nobody knew it then. The, uh, also, I think it's fair to suggest to you that, and I'm sure all of the members would agree, that Dr. Benish didn't make any worse, any more of a mistake than the rest of us made. The only difference is that we got right out that we could not come to an agreement with the communists before we went to the liberated part of the Republic via Moscow, because in our London State Council, there Can you continue? Uh, in Moscow, where we arrived on March 17, the Soviet government didn't directly interfere in our negotiations. Some kind of pressure was implied in the fact that we, the guests, were given to understand that eight days had been reserved for our visit. What date was this, uh, Mr. Strickland? What date? We are fully representative and democratic government. I did not consider that our government at the time was such. 
This is just to show you that the, the slightest sign of encouragement from the West, we did our best to, to show the world that we did not wish this communist domination. So after this declaration from the United States, I called Groza and told him about Mr. Brotiano's party. And I knew. I spell it. Manu, M-A-N-I-U, I believe. Yes. And uh, the other person? Brotiano. B R A T I A N O. So, the government was the same except for these two people. And this government was there to prepare. To make the. to make some. Uh, some uh, profitable things for my, for my country. Under the condition that I will uh, tell something which nobody would trust outside the world, so that the relatively the price what was put for me Uh, will you raise your right hand, General Bohr? You do solemnly swear that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do solemnly swear that I will tell the truth and only to the God. Thank you. Uh, General uh, Pelczynski, you do solemnly swear that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes, I do. Uh, you I do. do. Uh, General... Uh, Bunter, do you, know, do you understand English? Yes. You do solemnly swear that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Uh, Colonel Pomian. Uh, Dick. Dick. Uh, <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I wish to join in <coughs> the comments that you made in reference to the anniversary of the uprisings in East Germany uh, to the uh, free people of the world. They appreciate the significance of that movement, and I sincerely believe that as time goes on, we'll find that in other parts of the world where people have the desire to be free, 
will actually demonstrate in a similar manner when the, when the appropriate time comes about. Would you tell me, please, what subject or subjects you taught to the children? Professor de français, de langue française. French language. Language. You didn't teach any history then. Pas d'histoire. No. Uh, did uh, <coughs> the other teachers teach the uh, children that? Uh, Russia is protecting the Lithuanians from the uh, capitalist world, do you know? Est-ce qu'on vous a, est-ce qu'on, uh, il y a cette propagande aussi que la, la Russie soviétique vous, vous, vous protecte, c'est une protectrice de Lituanie contre le capitalisme, contre le uh, coureur de guerre venant oui. de ce côté? Oui, elle protège et elle a libéré la Lituanie. First, the Russians are saying that they liberated us, they liberated Lithuania. And secondly, that they are protecting us and will protect. What were some of the reasons that the children gave for going to church when they were called upon before a group to explain the fact that they had been at church? De, de dire, de se rendre compte pourquoi ils sont allés à l'église, ce que vous avez raconté avant. Quelles que, que, que les raisons que les enfants ont, ont, répondu, ont dit Les enfants se troublaient et ne savaient que répondre. The children have been rather troubled and didn't know what to answer. Are the children taught that they are now, since the so-called liberation, a part of uh, Mother Russia? Or are they taught that they are still an independent nation of Lithuania? Do you know? Est-ce qu'on dit aux enfants qu'ils sont maintenant toujours encore indépendants citoyens de Lituanie ou déjà membres de la grande mère Russie? Oh non, on leur dit qu'ils sont des Lituaniens indépendants. Oh non, they are told that we are independent Lithuanians. Yes. When Dr. Bennis uh, went to uh, Moscow on one occasion, you said that he did not participate in any of the uh, uh, conversations and with talks. the communists. In, he didn't participate in our conversations with the communists because he was a president above the parties. Well, he went there for the ride then. For for the ride. Uh, no, he had to return. He, he had to return <coughs> home. He did not perform any official function there except the social function. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, in 40, th you, you ask about 43? No. First 43, he was there alone. I mean, uh, yes. not with you. And then, then he uh, discussed and uh, with a... Uh, about those 16 men who were invited to Moscow together with Stipulkovsky about which we've had testimony. Yes, yes, that's right. He was one of those. Yes, yes, from this group. 
Yeah, at that time, was chief of staff of the... At this time, he was colonel and my chief of staff. After a very long meeting, They do that here as well as in 